In today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into how you can generate and customize open API v3 specification descriptions of your service stack APIs. With the release of Service Stack 8.1, there is now a way to opt in for tighter integration with more of the fundamentals of ASP.NET Core and the wider .NET ecosystem. Specifically, this includes the ability to represent your Service Stack APIs as standard ASP.NET Core endpoints, use the built-in IOC and dependency injection system of ASP.NET Core, and using system.text.json for the serialization of your requests and responses from your APIs. One of the big advantages of opting into these changes is the ability to have your own deeper integrations with other open source libraries, such as Swashbuckle for Open API v3 specification generation. We have a separate video guide on how to upgrade your existing service stack solutions, and there are also updated templates that will give you this setup by default. So today, we're going to focus on how you can describe your service stack APIs using the Open API v3 specification for all your services, as well as simple ways to provide additional descriptions while also benefiting from the in-depth customization available in the Swashbuckle library. We will start this with a new Blazor application based on the Service Stack Blazor template, which you can create using the Service Stack.NET X tool and the command x new Blazor space my app. Jumping into the example, we will first need to enable the Open API v3 specification generation for your Service Stack APIs. And this step can be easily done by using the Service Stack.NET X tool again, but this time using the command xmix open api3. This command creates a new configure.openapi.cs file in your Appos project, which uses an iStartup filter to seamlessly integrate with your existing application. If we open this generated file, we will see there is not much to it, and this is because it utilizes a new service stack.aspnet core.openapi library that is a wrapper around the swashbuckle library itself. And with just these changes, we can run the application and view the service stack APIs using the Swagger UI. The Open API v3 specification that is generated uses the metadata about your service stack services to generate what you can see in the Swagger UI. But we also have an easy way to add some additional information that will filter its way down to the Swagger UI using attributes on your request DTO, such as the API attribute, notes attribute, and API member. These attributes can be applied directly to your request DTOs to provide clear clear documentation for your API endpoints. For example, if we wanted to add a brief description of what the API does in the Swagger UI, we would use the API attribute and the description property of that attribute. To illustrate this, let's apply these attributes to the create to do request. We can apply the API attribute with the description create a new to do item on top of the class of the create to do request. Just below that, we can also apply the notes attribute with the constructor value of a longer description of that same create to do API. And lastly, we will apply the API member attribute to describe the text property of the create to do request. Running our application and navigating to forward slash swagger, we can see our create to do request with the route of forward slash to do's and the post verb. Here we can see the create a to do item description in line with the create to do request, making it easy to see at a glance what this API does. If we expand this, we will then see our notes attribute with more detail of how our API works or maybe other information related to this request. And lastly, if we look down below, we will see additional information about the text property passed to this request coming from the API member attribute. Beyond the basic customization of description, Swashbuckle also allows you to customize the response and schemas generated for your API descriptions. 
One powerful way to do this is by implementing the iOperation filter interface, which enables you to modify operation metadata before it's used by the Swashbuckle library. For example, you could use this interface to accurately reflect some of your custom code that returns specific messages from your APIs, providing developers with clearer error handling instructions or additional contextual information about your application's behavior. Additionally, you can customize the schemas generated for your API data models, ensuring that they accurately reflect your application's business logic. Let's create one of these I operation filters to customize the response of the update to do request. If, for example, you're using the OpenAPI v3 specification generation to assist you with the creation of your own custom client libraries, you might want to adhere to different naming conventions than what you use for your service deck APIs and the request DTO classes. The update to do request is its own request DTO class. However, it has the exact same structure as the to do model class that we have to represent a to do item. If you want to generate part of your client library to take a to-do object and return a to-do object from an update operation, we will need to change the schema reference used in the OpenAPI specification. Here we can do this by matching the update to-do route and verb to then apply a different OpenAPI schema reference. Now, if we run our application and check our Swagger UI, we can see the schemas used for the request and the response are both the to-do schema. By hooking into the Swashbuckle library and the customizations it offers, you can change any part of the OpenAPI v3 specification that it generates. However, it's always important to remember that since you're making these customizations by hand, it can be easy for these descriptions to deviate from the actual behavior of your APIs. By leveraging the changes in Service Stack 8.1 and incorporating the OpenAPI v3 specification generation for your Service Stack APIs, you can greatly enhance their reuse. And with the extensibility of the Swashbuckle library, there are loads of opportunities to improve the developer experience for those that are integrating with your web services. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback or want to share your experience of using Service Stack APIs, Point one, please let us know in the comments below. Or you can join us in our community Discord and GitHub discussions. Service Stack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.